covenant I will make with them, says the Lord God. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Bless the Lord, who forgives all our sins. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. We say the Trisagium. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, have mercy on us. The prayer of the day, let us pray. O oh God, our Redeemer, in our weakness we have failed to be your messengers of forgiveness and hope. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, that we may follow your commands and proclaim your reign of love. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated in the liturgy of the Word. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, You are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears, to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, 
he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. About this we have much to say that is hard to explain, since you have become dull in understanding. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need to, someone to teach you again the basic elements of the oracles of God. You need milk, not solid food. For everyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is unskilled in the word of righteousness. But solid food is for the mature, for those whose faculties have been trained by practice to distinguish good from evil. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This reason that I have come to this hour. 
Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. C.S. Lewis, in his autobiography, Surprised by Joy, recalls how he always seemed to have had a desire for God, a desire that cannot be filled by any earthly means. Lewis searched and searched until, as he records, he realised God was searching for him. St. Augustine, in his Confessions, begins, begins, I searched, I read, I wanted. I, I, I. They end with, you came, you touched me, you spoke. You, you, you. As we read the Bible, we discover that God is a covenant-making God. A, co a covenant is an agreement, but not like a contract, which usually has to do with exchange of goods and services. A covenant is more an exchange of hearts. The sacrament of marriage is a covenant, an exchange of hearts. It also includes certain conditions. For example, the agreement to forsake all others. God says, I will be your God, you will be my people. But there are certain conditions that must be adhered to for the covenant to work. God made a covenant with Noah that he would never again wipe out humanity by a flood. And the sign of that covenant was the rainbow in the sky. The covenant with Abraham that he would be the father of many nations was sealed with the sign of circumcision. The covenant with Moses was sealed by sprinkling blood on the altar and the people. It was accompanied by certain conditions the Ten Commandments, all the moral and ceremonial instructions of the books of, Levitic, of Exodus and Leviticus. Later on, there was the covenant with David. I will place your descendant on the throne, and his reign will last forever. Talking, of course, of the Son of David, our Lord Jesus Christ. Then the covenant is sealed by the sacrifices in the temple, God makes these laws and agreements and covenants with Israel to bring them into conformity with his own mind and will, to rightly order their lives towards God. Yet all these covenants and their various prescriptions and laws tend to remain somewhat external to the people. They didn't reach into their hearts. Imagine learning a sport or a musical instrument, or a language. You can read the book, the rudiments of music, the rules of a sport, or um, the parts of speech and the vocabulary of a language. You understand the basic principles of serving in tennis, the notes on the piano and the page uh, on the page of sheet music. But not until those laws and rules and so on enter your body, your mind, and your instincts can you really play the game or the instrument or speak the language. There comes a moment when these things that were once very foreign to us, for example, a particular golf swing, 
that when you first try it, feels so awkward and unnatural. But then there comes a moment when it sort of gets into you and it becomes second nature. It happened to me with swimming. One day, after countless lessons that didn't seem to make the slightest difference, I suddenly got it. Learning a foreign language at first feels so foreign because it is foreign. A friend of mine said he was told by his Italian teacher that when you start to dream in the language you're learning, then you've got it. What was once an external law now becomes second nature. <coughs> Holding all that in our minds, we come to Jeremiah 31, verse 31. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. All these laws and prescriptions become so familiar to us that they become internalized. God's law will not be written on tablets of stone, but on your hearts. Zoom forward about 600 years to our gospel today, which comes toward the end of Jesus' life. Things are gaining momentum. People of all kinds are wanting to be near Jesus, including some Greeks, very likely Greek-speaking Jews, of what was called the Diaspora, in other words, the Jews who were scattered all over the known world. Jesus is drawing people by the power of his preaching the kingdom of God. He presents a new way of seeing and a new way of being. He finally enters Jerusalem on a donkey to the adoring adulation of the crowds. Our gospel is about that moment when these Greek speakers approach Philip and ask to see Jesus. He tells them the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. This celebrity figure, this great rabbi to whom they have been attracted, drawn to, finally reveals that his moment of glorification has come. How wonderful and exciting. But Jesus then says this, Very truly I tell you, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Seeds last a long time. Seeds have been found that can be planted, even though they're tens and thousands of years old. But only if the seed dies, breaks open, gives itself away, it remains this hard little protected shell. But if it dies, look what it produces. Look at any plant or shrub or tree or fern or any kind of plant life. Think of the great Jarrah trees that can reach 500 years old. They all started as tiny little seeds. If you put that tiny seed in a drawer or in a jar, it would be like that for who knows how long. Only by dying, by breaking itself open, giving itself away, can it give rise to this magnificent tree. And it's similar in the spiritual order. The world teaches us to remain little protected seeds. Get as much as you can and whatever you've got, hang on to it, because the world's a dangerous place. Stockpile as many goods as you can get and hang on to them. Protect them. Keep them safe. No. By contrast, Jesus goes on to say, those who lose their life, lose it. And those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Those who recognise that there is a far better life than the world's understanding. The kingdom Jesus preached and embodied and soon established by his death and resurrection. We follow him along that path. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also, by giving away our life in love. We tend to automatically think of love in sentimental terms. The Russian author Dostoevsky said, Love is harsh and dreadful. 
Why make a statement like that? Because love means exactly by the cracking open of one's life. It means not living in such a way that you confine yourself to safe spaces. It means giving your life away with a kind of reckless abandon. Unless the seed dies, it remains a safe little space. If it dies, then it bears much fruit. Look at the, look at the saints. For example, Maximilian Kolbe, the Polish priest, could have allowed the man in his cell to die. Instead, he volunteered to take his place in that awful cell where the condemned prisoners were starved to death. Think of St. Damien of Molokai, who worked with lepers, knowing that he would eventually succumb to the disease and be covered with ugly postules. Think of the stories like Star Wars, in which Luke Skywalker gives up a quiet, serene and safe life on Tatooine to go and fight against the injustice and oppression of the Galactic Empire. Think of the Lord of the Rings, where you have Frodo and Sam leaving the peace and security and safety of the Shire to battle against the evil of Sauron. The sea could easily have stayed safe and unharmed. A few days after this, Jesus shares the Last Supper with his disciples. He breaks the bread and pours the wine. As he distributes the cup to them, he says the words we hear at every Eucharist. Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. This is the cup of the new covenant. Every time we attend the liturgy, we hear those words. Jesus breaks open his life, gives himself away, hung on the cross. When you come forward and the priest or whoever administers the host and the chalice to you says, the body of Christ, the bread of heaven, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, and you respond, Amen. You then ingest those elements. What is happening is the fulfilment of these words in Jeremiah. I will place my law within them. I will write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. We're frequently told to be careful what we eat. As we receive Christ in the Blessed Sacrament, his law of the new and everlasting covenant is now going to be inscribed in your body, your mind, and your heart. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Let us together affirm the faith of the Church. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten of God. Of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became true to him. For our sake, he was crucified and the conscious side. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. 
We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and worshipped and glorified, and so has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one body, Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. The response to our prayers will be on this overhead screen. God, our God, you have made us your own, and you listen when we call to you. Hear our prayers for all your people. We pray for your world that peace and justice may abound, and all your children share the bounty of your earth. We pray for all who work for peace, justice, and the preservation of the earth, the conservationists and ecologists for UN agencies, peacemaking forces, and relief and aid organisations, for Australian Volunteers International, and all who share their time and skills. For these and all who serve your people, we give you thanks and praise. We pray for the Church, that we may be a servant Church, faithfully proclaiming your Gospel in sacrament, and word. We pray for all who work to spread your good news of redemption and love. For pastors, priests and deacons, for lay ministers, youth workers and teachers, for missionaries and all who preach the gospel in difficult and dangerous places. For these and all who serve your people, we give you thanks and praise. We pray for our community, that it may be a place of safety and belonging, where all are welcomed, respected and valued. We pray for all who work to make our community a more caring place, for service organisations, welfare agencies and hospital auxiliaries, for firefighters and police, and for ambulance and emergency services. For those who care for the very old and for the very young. For these and all who serve your people, we, 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 we give you thanks and praise. We pray for all who suffer, that they might find a consolation in their sorrow, companionship in their loneliness, and relief in their pain. We pray for all who work to alleviate the sufferings of others, the doctors, nurses, paramedics, the social workers, counsellors and chaplains, for those who sit with the sick and wait with the dying. For these and all who serve your people, we, we give you thanks and praise. We give you thanks and praise for your faithful servants of every generation, for all who, following your example, have selfishly, selflessly, given their lives for others. May we also follow you and serve you, that with all your saints, we may be drawn to your eternal presence, for you are our God and we are your people. For these and all who serve your people, we, we, we give you thanks and praise. Almighty God, you have promised to hear our prayers. Grant that what we have asked in faith, we may by your grace receive, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said, Whenever you stand praying, forgive, if you have anything against anyone, so that your Father also, who is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. 
Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to keep the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that he may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Compassion and forgiveness belong to the Lord our God, though we have rebelled and wandered far off. Let us then ask for mercy, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Merciful God, our Maker and our Judge, we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. Strengthen us to love and obey you in Jesus' name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please stand for the reading of God's <laughs> Christ has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also
you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. All glory and honour be yours always and everywhere, mighty Creator, ever-living God. We give you thanks and praise for your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who by the power of your Spirit was born of Mary and lived as one of, one of us. He was tempted in every way as we are, yet he did not sin. By his death on the cross and rising to new life, he offered the one true sacrifice for sin and obtained an eternal deliverance for his people. By his grace, we are able to triumph over every evil and to walk in the way of his love. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Merciful God, we thank you for these gifts of your creation, this bread and wine, and we pray that by your word and Holy Spirit, we who need to drink them may be partakers of Christ's body and blood. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread, and when he had given you thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance. After supper he took the cup, and again giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance. Therefore, we do as our Saviour has commanded, proclaiming his offering of himself made once for all upon the cross, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again. We celebrate with this bread and this cup, his one perfect and sufficient sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Renew us by your Holy Spirit, Unite us in the body of your Son, and bring us with all your people into the joy of your eternal kingdom, through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in songs of never-ending praise. Blessing, honour, and glory in our heart, our Lord's Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray.
we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We who are many are one body, for we all share in the one bread. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, and grant us to all peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father.
Let us pray. <coughs> Compassionate and loving God, through your Son, Jesus Christ, you have fed us and have reconciled your people to yourself. Following his example of fasting and prayer, may we obey you with willing hearts and serve one another in holy love. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and